Today we're going to look at the biography of Nathaniel Hawthorne. With Nathaniel Hawthorne's great-great-grandfather William Hawthorne, he ordered the whipping of Anne Coleman and four others in the streets of Salem, Massachusetts. Now his great-grandfather John Hawthorne was the magistrate presiding over the trial of the accused witches of Salem in 1692. So looking at his family history, when we think of the Hawthorns, we first of all see that he's actually changed his last name from his great-great-grandfather and his great-grandfather. They were known as the Hathorns, and it might be likely that they have done so in order to try and get away from the history of what happened in Salem, Massachusetts. But then we start off with our own childhood here. Now, he was born in July 4th, 1804 in Salem, Massachusetts, and his father died when Hawthorne was only four years old. Now, he was sent to private school once his relatives discovered his storytelling abilities, and then finally for college, he was sent to Bowdoin College in Maine. Now, Nathaniel Hawthorne's classmates included the president, the president-to-be, uh, Franklin Pierce, and the author, Henry Longfellow. So Henry Longfellow was a poet, uh, also considered an educator, um, and he was a lover of languages. He actually traveled quite a bit across Europe and came back and taught languages at Bowdoin College in Maine. Nathaniel Hawthorne graduated from Bowdoin College in 1825. Now, when he goes back to Salem, Massachusetts, he has decided here on out he is going to be a writer. So Nathaniel first anonymously published short stories and a novel called Fanshawe. Hawthorne later formally withdrew most of this early work, discounting it as the work of inexperienced youth, and he burned most of his works from these very young years. So once he decides he actually needs to learn more about society and to become more mature uh, in order to write well, he comes back into society by becoming the editor for the American magazine of useful and entertaining knowledge in 1836. But of course he has to make a living, so he gets an appointment to the Boston Custom House in 1839. And once he is settled, he becomes engaged to Sophia Peabody, and they married in 1842. Now, after his marriage to Sophia, Nathaniel moved to the Old Manse in Concord, Massachusetts. And there, he joins the writing circles of people such as Henry David Thoreau, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Louisa May Alcott. Now, at the time, they were famous for their transcendentalism. And the transcendentalists believed that the human existence transcended the sensory realm, and they rejected formalism in favor of individual intuition and imagination. As he's continuing his writing, Nathaniel, between 1846 and 1849, is going to serve as a surveyor of the Salem, Massachusetts Custom House, but he was ousted from that job in 1849 when the incoming political party, the Whigs, fired him to put in their own political appointees. At this same point in time, Hawthorne wrote a biography for presidential candidate Pierce for his campaign. After all, Pierce had attended college with Hawthorne, so they knew one another. And then once he becomes president, President Pierce then appointed Hawthorne to serve as the U.S. Consul to Liverpool in England. Now, when we look at the works of Nathaniel Hawthorne, he has quite a few influences. First, his early childhood in Salem and work in the Salem Custom House. So there's a lot about the Salem, Massachusetts background that he's going to use. His Puritan family background also becomes quite prominent in his stories. Because of his Puritan family background, he believed in the existence of the devil. And a lot of times you're going to hear the characterization of devil or demon type uh, characters in his stories. He also believed in determinism, which is a theory of predestination, that when you come here to earth, you already have your destiny uh, set out for you, that you don't have any free will. And so when we take a look at the works of Nathaniel Hawthorne, we do have his very first novel, Fanshawe, which he was not proud of. But then we start continuing on into some of his more famous works. Mosses from the Old Manse gets his foot in the door so he can write his more famous works of the Scarlet Letter in 1850. 
and in 1851, he writes both The House of Seven Gables and The Snow Image. In 1852, he writes The Blythdale Romance, and he also helps out his friend the president by writing The Life of Franklin Pierce. After he's U.S. Consul, uh, he comes back to Massachusetts, and he writes The Marble Fawn in 1860. So in his final days, when Nathaniel Hawthorne returns to the U.S. from Europe in 1860, he returns to Concord, Massachusetts, and his home. Almost immediately after that, he becomes ill, and he underwent a loss of literary creativity. So he journeyed to the White Mountains up north, hoping to restore his health. And there he dies in Plymouth, New Hampshire, on May 19, 1864, and he's buried in the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Concord, Massachusetts. Now, most of his famous work deals with Puritan background, since Hawthorne grew up with the Puritan background in his family. And Puritanism is the religious reform movement of the 16th and 17th centuries that were seeking to purify the Church of England. It is characterized by earnest, intense moral and religious principles, such as the necessary covenant relationship with God, the emphasis on preaching, and the Holy Spirit's dominance over reason as the instrument of your salvation. And they would believe that America is a holy commonwealth and a covenanted community, almost as if they were building the uh, new city upon the hill. So, of course, we also will have a bit of the Pilgrims, the settlers of Plymouth, Massachusetts, the first permanent colony of New England in 1620, that Hawthorne is also going to be using a bit of history from. Now, these are members of the English Separatist Church, which was a more radical faction of Puritanism. And then finally, you're also going to see, especially in ideals such as the Scarlet Letter, the House of the Seven Gables, most of his famous works with the Salem Witch Trials, um, you are going to be seeing a lot about the Puritanistic uh, ideals of society being spoke. But just in case you need to know more about the Salem Witch Trials, they happened from about May to October in 1692 in Salem, Massachusetts. And they constitute a series of investigations and persecutions that caused 19 witches to be hanged, one to be uh, stoned to death, and many others imprisoned. Now, this is a period of public hysteria that was generated by false accusations and coerced confessions. So these were neighbors against neighbors. Thank you so much for stopping by to learn more about the author Nathaniel Hawthorne. If you'd like to learn more about his actual uh, writings, please let me know in the comments down below which, which particular writings of his you'd like to learn. And as always, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed.